Hey everyone, welcome back. So in our last video, we spent some time talking about the decision element and how we're gonna use it to check if we found our primary contact. If we do, we'll just update the case. If not, then we'll go and try to find the oldest contact related to any given account. And so I said that I was going to check in between um, the last video and this video, what the correct sort order was. And instead of doing that by myself, I thought I, I would show you how I'm gonna check that in this video uh, at the start, so you can kind of conceptualize that sort order a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do, and you don't necessarily need to follow along with this, is I'm gonna click uh, open the case, and I'm just trying to access this gear icon here, and I'm gonna press the developer console. And so um, Salesforce you know, obviously has a lot of functionality in it, and we don't need to cover everything here, and you may not totally understand this, but just know that the same way that you could create a report in Salesforce, you could write a query. And so that's what I'm gonna do. And so this uh, query right here is uh, select ID created date from, and I'm gonna change this to contact, and maybe I'll even add in a field as the, the name here, so return in our results. And the key thing to know about this query, you know, this won't be on any test or anything, is that it's just like running a report. And you can see at the very end that I'm sorting by created date, and right now I have it in ascending order. So I'm gonna press execute. And what this does is it goes into Salesforce and it looks at every contact, because that's what we're looking at here, and it pulls the three fields that I picked. So the ID field, the name field, and the created date. And you can see that it's ordering by created date in ascending order. Now, in a developer environment, all your contacts and records that exist in the system get created at the same time. So that's why the created date is identical for all these. But then our Bob apples and our Tina apples were created at a later time. And so you can see that when you sort in created date ascending order, that the oldest contacts actually show up first. So um, we know for a fact that January 15th, comes before January 17th. And so uh, you can see that the 15th, or the contacts created on the 15th are showing up first, and the ones created on the 17th are showing up last. And so if I were to change this to descending order, then the newest contacts would be at the top and the oldest contacts would be at the bottom. And so when you're thinking about your get records, this is actually what Salesforce is doing on the back end. Salesforce Flow Builder translates your get records into a filter or a query that looks just like this. And so when you say, hey, Salesforce, sort by created date in descending order, you are actually changing the way the results are returned into that get records. And you can see we have a whole list here. And you can actually tell Salesforce to store all of these into a big collection or just pick the first one in the list. And that's what we're doing in our flow. We're saying, hey, Salesforce, we're gonna change it to sort by ascending order so that the oldest contacts are first, and then just pick um, the first one that you find in the list under the assumption that um, whichever contact is first is indeed the oldest. You know, it's unlikely in your production environment that you'll have several contacts created at the exact same uh, second in terms of the date time. So I'm just gonna minimize that and we'll go back to our flow and you'll see that in our get oldest contact record here, I'm gonna double click that open, and we can change the sort order to ascending, which um, as I'll show again, is how we have the oldest contacts appear at the top of the list. So I'll minimize that. And again, that's why this uh, how many records to store is really important, because when you select only the first record, only the first record, uh, Salesforce will store that record from the top of the list. Alternatively, if you wanted to store all the records, you would choose that, and then you would have a big collection. And we'll talk about collections later in the course, but for now, just know we're going to pick the first record. And uh, I guess before we leave this get contact, this get oldest contact screen, make sure you change the sort order to be um, ascending by created date. And we'll press done. And then I'll just you know space these out a little bit more. And so what we need to do now is we need to um, use either the primary contact or the oldest contact to update our case. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. For example, you could drag another decision element to the canvas and um, check whether you found the oldest contact or not, and then you know have that update the case. 
Or uh, what we're going to do, just as we did in an earlier lecture, is use a formula. And so the reason we're going to use a formula is uh, right here inside the update records. And I'm going to double click this open. And you'll see that right now we're setting the contact ID to be the get primary contact ID, which is great if we find the primary contact. But sometimes we won't. Sometimes there will be no primary contact. And so we will look for the oldest contact, in which case this value won't work. Instead, we would want it to show the get oldest contact contact ID. And so that's what our formula is going to do. It's going to help us check if we found the primary contact or the oldest contact. And this is what we did in the uh, task assignment video or something similar. So I'm going to click the manager and I'm going to press new resource and resource type will be a formula. And we'll just call this um, contact ID formula. Actually, I'm going to put an F at the beginning and an underscore. And I'm not sure if we covered that in the course, but there are different conventions for formulas that you might see different Salesforce professionals use. And this is one of them where you kind of put an F in the beginning, or you could even put it at the end. And that typically denotes that this resource is a formula. And so the data type for this formula will be a text. And we're going to create a very similar formula to the one we did in the task assignment lecture. And so this will be an if statement, followed by an opening parenthesis. And I'm going to press space a few times so that there's some separation on the screen so that it's easy to follow along. And then I'm going to type the word is blank. And I'm going to do an opening parenthesis. I'm going to press the space bar and do a closing parenthesis. So I'm trying to go slow to make the formula really easy to follow. And what this is blank um, function does is it checks to see if a particular resource has a value or not. If it does have a value, then this returns the uh, it returns false because it is not blank. And so what we're going to look at is the get primary contact. And the way I did that, I clicked in the formula editor, you can click insert a resource, I'm going to select get primary contact. And I'm just going to scroll down to the ID field, very similar to how our decision worked. And so I'm gonna say, hey, if the get primary contact ID is blank, and then I'm going to uh, enter a comma here. I'm going to then again select the insert a resource, and I'm going to select uh, the record single variable for our get oldest contact. And what I'm doing here is picking the get oldest contact ID, and I'm adding another comma. And then I'm going to, here, let me disable actually. Grammarly is adding some red squiggles here. Oh, okay, maybe it's Chrome. Sorry about that, um, I'll look into fixing that. Um, but to finish up our formula, um, we need to uh, enter our final condition for our if statement. And so what that will be is um, the primary contact ID. So again, I'll select insert a resource. I'm gonna select the get primary contact ID, scroll down, and pick the ID field, and you'll see that uh, by clicking that, it again gets inserted into the formula. I'm going to press space uh, twice, and then I'm going to put a closing parenthesis. And so I'm going to cover the formula again, just for those of you, uh, well, everyone should be following along, but um, for those of you that are newer with formulas, just to make sure that yours is correct, and as well as to explain the logic. So I'm saying if, and I have an opening parenthesis, and I'm saying is blank. And what we're doing here is this function checks to see if the value in between the opening and clothing, clothing, closing parenthesis um, has a value. So if it is blank, then this evaluates, this first part of the if statement evaluates to true, which means that um, the second part of the if statement is uh, what the formula evaluates as. So if the primary contact is blank, then the formula is going to spit out the oldest contact ID if it's present. If it's not present, then that means there were no contacts at all on the account, and it will just say no. Um, if the first part of the if statement evaluates as um, false, where the get primary contact ID does have a value, then we will not, um, it'll just skip this oldest contact ID, and uh, the formula will spit out the primary contact ID. And um, that's it. 
that's kind of the end of the if statement. And so just to double check that you have it right, um, you can press this check syntax button and you should get a valid message. If not, check all your parentheses and check your commas. You should have an opening parenthesis for the if statement. You should have is blank, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, followed by a comma. Then you should have the get oldest contact ID, followed by a comma, and then the get primary contact ID. And there's no comma after that, just a closing parenthesis. So assuming that's all right, you can press done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open our update case record and we're going to swap the value from the get primary contact contact ID. And instead, we're going to use that formula that we just created so that uh, no matter which way the flow evaluates, whether we find the primary contact or we try to find the oldest contact, uh, the formula will have the right value. And then all I have to do is connect the get oldest contact to the update case and press save and save that. And that's it. You know, that's all our flow, uh, all the changes we need to make in our flow in order to handle both finding a primary or the oldest contact. And so I've saved that to the canvas. Make sure you do as well. In the next video, we'll do some debugging on a different account that has uh, no primary contact. We'll make sure everything is working. And then um, if the debugging looks good, we'll activate our flow and test it out. And then we'll wrap up the challenge.